Okay, I didn't want to leave you hanging, and I also didn't want to sit there and make you um, go through the torture of watching me figure these out um, because um, it it was it was a slow process. <laughs> Sorry, but um, I was I was on the ethmoid bone, and I was kind of circling. I, if you remember the last video, I was sort of moving my mouse around this orange these orange bones because the ethmoid bone is hidden behind. Um, you know, like the nasal bone and the maxilla, um, it's it's within the skull. So the ethmoid bone is labeled here, and this is why this is hard to label because you have to also put ethmoid bone here, and then you have to know the middle nasal concha and the perpendicular plate are parts of the ethmoid bone. So it does take a while to do this, but I mean, you can look at it first and then put put it um, back to unlabeled in practice. Now, another thing I want to say, and then I, I made a mistake. I said I was going to teach chapter seven. Chapter seven is the anatomy. That is something that I would study with the um, art labeling activities, which this is one of them. Um, all of the art labeling activities for the skeleton and um, I would also study the PAL assignments for the skeleton. That's how I would prepare for the lab practical, um, uh, for practical exam two for chapter seven. Um, and chapter seven is mostly going to be covered in the practical exam because it is mostly um, like anatomy questions rather than, you know, um, in lecture we tend to focus on we do ask about anatomy, but we also focus on um, the physiology, you know, more in lecture. So the way the structures actually function. So anyway, um, I know something else I wanted to tell you about the about studying for the practical exams. Um, one thing that and you already know this because you've already done the homework for chapter seven. I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you've done the homework for chapter seven because we're our next uh, chapter is chapter nine at this point. So you know, if you watch those videos in the chapter seven homework, you know that um, the questions that they ask are hard in themselves. If you don't know your directional terms, you need to know your directional terms to to even understand the question. You need to know what superior and inferior and lateral and medial and proximal and distal and then anterior and posterior, which um, that means front and back. But also we use ventral for anterior and dorsal for posterior. That can be really confusing. But you've got to know those directional terms to be able to answer um, some of those types of questions. This would be um, for like when you're st when you are doing the homeworks, you're you're really preparing kind of for lab for the practical exams and the lecture exams. But but the questions that are worded like that, those are going to be on the lecture exams. Um, those are lecture exam type questions, even though they're on the the um you know the 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 structure. So um. Watch those videos very carefully, answer those questions, and um, make notes while you watch the videos. Um, I, I think the videos do a really excellent job um, of going over each individual bone and the structure, the structures associated with each bone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to chapter six instead of seven. And this is the one that I'm actually going to lecture on because this is about bones and skeletal tissues, so it's more something I can actually teach you. Um, chapter seven is more, I mean, you can read just as well as I can. And I would go and pronounce words for you because sometimes that's, that's very hard, but you've got those videos where, you know, the, uh, I think it's usually a lady uh, where the narrator is pronouncing the, the terms that you need to know how to pronounce. So. Um, and I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think in PAL, in PAL, you can hit, um, you can get the, the 
um, pronunciation. Like you can click on a structure and um, the sound button and get that structure pronounced for you. Um, but the point is, I think I'd be wasting my time teaching the chapters that are just memorization. But, but chapter six is not exactly just memorization. Chapter six is um, some things that, um, you know, I can probably help you understand better because you need to understand. So um, the skeletal cartilages is uh, section number one of chapter six. Um, first slide says the human skeleton initially consists of just cartilage when when it's um, the, the um, baby is a fetus. When the individual organism, the individual human is a fetus, the skeleton is just cartilage. And that cartilage is replaced by bone except in areas requiring flexibility. And then those areas will remain um, in cartilage form. Okay, so um, bone structure types and locations. I just wanna make sure my pointers. Okay, so skeletal cartilage is made of highly resilient molded cartilage tissue that consists primarily of water and it contains no blood vessels or nerves. That's very important to understand. We learned that in the tissue chapter. The perichondrium is the layer of dense connective tissue surrounding the cartilage. Peri, peri surround, chondra is cartilage. So perichondrium is dense connective tissue that surrounds cartilage. Um, and it does contain blood vessels. So it, that allows nutrient delivery to the cartilage. And then the cartilage is made up of chondrocytes. That means cartilage cells. Chondra means cartilage, site means cells. And these are cells that are encased in cavities they're just completely encased in their own little little cavity or home, I guess you could say. We call that the lacuna, lacunae, which um, bone cells are also housed in. Um, and then the matrix of cartilage is a jelly-like matrix, okay? So we learned that in the tissue chapter. There are three types of cartilage. And, and you're gonna see all three types in the skeletal system. Hyaline cartilage, which you're really gonna see um, at the ends of bones that um, meet in a joint, the articular joints, like the bones that meet in your, um, I don't know, let's just say your hip joint, okay? So your femur articulates or, or connects with um, your, pelvic bone and at a place called the acetabulum. And um, that, is a, that is a joint that is um, going to have at the ends of the bones that come together at the end of the femur and also, also um, a little bit around the acetabulum, there's going to be hyaline cartilage. Um, there's also hyaline cartilage forms the cartilage of the, the coastal cartilages of the ribs. Hyaline cartilage forms the, um, the larynx and it forms the tip of the nose. Then we have, um, and, and hyaline is the most abundant type of, of cartilage and only contains collagen fibers. Elastic cartilage contains a mix of collagen and elastic fibers where you're going to find this cartilage is the external ear and the epiglottis is actually made of elastic cartilage because remember it has to, um, well, we haven't gotten to this yet, but that's the structure that closes over your airway when you swallow so, um, so that food doesn't go down the wrong way. So um, elastic cartilage is, has to be flexible, it has to be more flexible than anything. And fibrocartilage is very tough. So it's, it's all collagen fibers and they're very thick collagen fibers. Um, and this is really tough cartilage like the disc. Um, when we say somebody has a slip disc or a herniated disc in their spine, those vertebral discs are made of fibrocartilage because if you, I don't know, um, 
jump off of a high place. You know, maybe you, I can't think of any example except my kids. And maybe one of my kids climbed a tree and has decided not to climb back down but jump. Their vertebral discs need to be able to be strong to support their spine um, so they won't, you know, break their back. Um, and then the menisci of the knee, this is fibrocartilage that kind of helps support the knee joint. So it's really tough, really tough, um, strong cartilage. So um, as far as cartilage in the human skeleton, you can go over this yourself. I mean, I can point it out, but it, it shows you like here. It's where you'd find articular cartilage. Um, all the artic, I mean, I, I, it is articular cartilage, but I meant to say hyaline. All the blue is hyaline cartilage. You can see everywhere there are joints, there's blue hyaline cartilage. You also have it in the ribs, the coastal cartilages. Um, and you have it at the tip of the nose. And uh, then you have elastic cartilages in very few places, the external ear, and then this is blown up, but the epiglottis, which I told you was the structure that closes over your airway, the opening to your um, larynx, and then the trachea, so that your food doesn't go down your windpipe, basically. And then all of this larynx is cartilage, voice box is cartilage, um, hyaline cartilage. So there's mostly hyaline cartilage. There's a little bit of elastic, and especially there's some green in the hands. I see that. And then red is fibrocartilages, and that's harder to see unless you blow this up, but there's definitely fibrocartilage here in between the vertebrae and um, in the menisci of the disc. They're, they're like on either side of the knee joint. They're sort of triangular shaped um, to, to give stability to the knee joint. Now, cartilage has to grow as well as bone. So what we're talking about is growth of cartilage during development um, because cartilage does not grow after, after we become adults. Cartilage can grow in two ways, and this is going to be true of bone also, so you should learn these words because we're gonna, they're going to come back again when we talk about bone. Appositional growth and interstitial growth. So appositional growth means that the cartilage is growing outward, I guess you could say. It's, um, it's like there is a, a small cartilage structure already and there, there's cartilage being lay, laid down on the surface of that, that cartilage model. So I don't draw very well, but let's just say this is our cartilage here. So that's our model. And then what's happening is more cartilage is laid on the outside, more cartilage is laid on the outside. So what you're getting is growth in um, length and diameter really, but you're getting growth toward the outside. The, 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 the cartilage is getting larger, okay? Interstitial growth means that the chondrocytes, which are the cartilage cells, are dividing and making new matrix within the cartilage. So the cartilage is expanding within. There's new matrix being made within the cartilage and new chondrocytes dividing. So the cartilage is getting larger from the inside out. That's the two types of growth. Um, and then another thing that happens to cartilage during development is that um, it calcifies. And that means it turns it. The calcification of car cartilage is not the same as bone. That's very in, important for you to understand. Um, some of the cartilage calcifies during um, growth and, and it can definitely occur in old age. And um, since we find a lot of cartilage at the joints, that, that's one of the re reasons for joint problems in older age. Um, but it's not the same as bone just because it's calcified. Bone is a, a little different. Now we're going to go into section 6.2 in the next video.